Hi, welcome back. Today's practice will be an intermediate practice, a little bit more um, strengthening for the arms and the shoulders, and also the abdominal area will be affected, all parts of the body, really. So the first um, pose that we'll do will be Gomokasana, cow face pose. So in case you need to have any props around you, just go ahead and get them ready. Have two straps, have two blocks, and I'm on one blanket. Before we start our practice, I wanted to let you know about my online programs and workshops. Whether you're new to Iyengar yoga and want to learn the basics in a systematic way, a seasoned practitioner looking to revisit the essentials, or a yoga teacher seeking inspiration. These programs and workshops are self-paced, allowing you to make consistent progress and revisit specific topics whenever you like. You can find the link in the description below. With that said, let's begin our practice today. So I'm gonna take the blanket away and <clears throat> first coming into Gomakasana, I'm sitting on both feet, Vajrasana, so the fronts of the ankles are on the floor. I'll turn to the side just to, so you can see the ankles. All right, now this heel, I wanna sit on that heel. I'm gonna lean forward and scissor my legs between the back of the thigh. So I want this calf muscle, the shin bone, to be at the top of the calf, and then I'll sit back. Okay, so now, this is where you may need a little bit of support with that blanket. So you can have a blanket there and sit directly on the heel. Toes are stretching back. Okay, let's try that again. So you come forward, scissor the legs, sit back on the foot. Releasing down. Okay, if you need to have support, you can have a blanket under your, your hip in case you're falling. So one leg is going to be lifted and one leg is down. And then sitting up tall. All right, so now in Gomokasana, the arm also comes up. So you'll take the opposite arm up. So I've got this right knee up, left arm up. Walk the hand down and then take the hand behind and walk the fingers up, catch the fingers. So that hand is right at the center of the spine. So there's a very compact action here. Outer thighs moving towards one another, calves are pressing, lifting up through the head. Keep the tailbone moving down. So stretching back through the back toes, feel both feet on the floor, ankles moving down and then lift the lower abdomen up, up into the chest. Rotate the outer arm so that the elbow is lifting up, and on the opposite side, your right side lifting up through that right trunk, roll that left shoulder back, right shoulder back. Just be there, breathing. Keep the breath relaxed, keep the breath soft, and as you sit, sit heavy, lift your lower back up. Lift up through the front chest. Release the hands and you'll come forward. So if you don't need to use the blanket or a block, you can take that away. So scissoring the legs. So I'm coming at the top of that calf, moving the shin bone to the back of the knee and then stretch the foot back Sit back on the foot. Now this knee is higher, you can see that. Adjust your back foot so that you can sit on it. If your ankle, ankles are tight, then you can have a little bit more support. You could use a block to under both hips or just that blanket and then level yourself out. Reach the right arm up, take the hand down. Walk the fingers down, walk the arm up. So just seeing how you can balance between the left side and the right side. Lift the arm up. So you're getting a nice extension through the bottom of the upper arm, the underneath part of the arm, 
Shoulder blade is directly behind. Open the armpit chest, drop the top of the shoulder. You can take your thumb at the top of the shoulder and move it down. Lifting up through that left side, roll that left shoulder back, collarbone wide, and right where the hand is, there, directly behind the heart, directly behind the sternum bone, lift the sternum bone. As you sit heavy on the feet, stretch the toes out, release the ankles down, release the top of the buttocks down, but continue to lift through the lower back and the lower abdomen up. You feel the front body extending upward, the skin on the back body descending, the bones descending down, back ribs moving forward toward the front chest. Quiet breath. And then release. Extend your arms out. And then come out. Let's go into Adho Mukha Svanasana, just to get that openness through the backs of the knees after you've been sitting like that. So just allowing that circulation to come, draw the kneecaps up. And as you do that, open through the inner knee, the outer knee. And now pressing the heels down, any amount, lift the backs of the thighs up toward the sitting bone. At the same time, roll the top of the buttocks down toward the sitting bones. Keep the outer hips moving towards one another, inner thighs rolling back. Feeling the weight on the hands, pressing down and lifting up through the wrist, lifting up through the upper arm, into the elbow, through the outer shoulder. So feeling the upper arm bones connected into the shoulder girdle. From the legs, connecting up into the pelvis. And release, come down. Sit back on your feet. Stretch the toes back. Okay, you're coming up now. We're gonna do a couple of standing poses. So separate your feet, hands on your hips. You come into Virabhadrasana one. So I'm turning my right foot, exter externally rotating, or turning my right leg out, turning my back heel. Have enough distance that you can come down into this bent knee position. Elbows moving back, chest is lifting. Thumbs at your tailbone, extend down, and then turn. Turn from the back body, turn the chest, reach the arms out, stay on the back foot, extend and lengthen through that back heel. If you need to get more space, move from that back foot. So maintaining the degree, the 90 degree of the front leg. So. Anytime you have to adjust your standing pose, you're always adjusting with that back leg. So back hip moving forward. Lift the pelvis off the front leg. Bring your arms out and reach the arms up. As you lift up, find that space where you had your hands earlier in Gomokasana. Lift the front chest from there. Lower the hip, lift up through the front body, quiet breath. Inhale, press up, turn the feet, and we'll turn to do the other side. All right, so turning that back foot, externally rotate the front leg. Virabhadrasana one, warrior. Virabhadrasana was a warrior, so taking on the feeling of a warrior. So being strong, the legs are strong, the arms and the trunk are strong, and lifting up.
Drop your shoulders. Lift from the back. Lift up into the front chest. Keep that back leg straight. To come up, press into the feet. Lift the arms up. Turn, bring the arms out to the side. And then jump the feet together. Okay, we're going to come into Ardha Chandrasana now. So just coming back into Tadasana. Use Tadasana as a resting place. Outer hips in. So bring firmness to the outer legs. And bring some balance into the feet. So feel the weight on the front of the foot, the back of the foot. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon, is a balancing pose. So important that when you're on two feet, you're balancing, but when you're on one foot, it becomes even more important. So feeling that movement of the foot. All right, and then you're gonna jump your feet apart. Nice wide stride. Turning your left foot, externally rotating your right leg. Coming into Yutita Trikonasana. Lengthening the side trunk. Keep this outer hip moving in. Bend the knee. Keep the arm lifted. So use that arm to maintain the turning of the chest. Step in. Lift the back leg. So pressing down with the fingertips, lift up through the arm, lift up through the shoulders. Turn the chest. Keep that back leg lifted. Flexing through the back foot to keep that extension and that firmness of the back leg. Reach the arm up. Bring compactness to the hips. So the outer hips, bringing the muscular action around the outer hips. Preparing to come down, bring your leg back. Come into your Ticha Trikonasana. And come up. My stride is a little short because I'm trying to fit onto this mat. So I'm going to come to the edge of this mat. It'll make a little bit more space. Bring my arms out. You teach a Trikonasana. Be there a moment. Feel that <coughs> front foot, back foot. Weighted equally, so you're on two feet. Preparing to come to one foot, walk the hand forward. Be on the toes. And then lift up through that leg. Stay with your breath. Using that activation from the arm, grounding from the floor up to the shoulders. Turn the chest. And then preparing to come down. Come back. Yuchita Trikonasana. Press into the feet. Inhale, come up. Turn the feet. Walk the feet together. All right, we're going to come into Adhamukha Svanasana. So bring your hands to the front of the mat. And then from there, we're going to go into Vasistasana. So it's pressing equally. I'm going to lift my left foot up. Come onto the outer edge of the foot. Now, pressing down, so I have the hand underneath the shoulder. Again, I'm going to bring the hand onto the hip. Use that foot on the floor. Lift up. So the hip is lifting, the chest is turning. They press down into that bottom hand, reaching up through the top arm. And then come down. I'm going to take the foot on the outer foot and then lift up. Tailbone, buttocks in, 
chest facing in front, turn and look up. Broaden the feet like you were in Tadasana. Hug the muscles of the arms into the bones, the legs into the bones. Connect back into the shoulders, connect back into the pelvis. Then coming down, Andha Mukha Svanasana. And then I'm going to come and turn around so you can see me. So from Andha Mukha Svanasana, come onto the outer edge of the other foot. Just brace myself. So stabilizing with the hand up through the arm, pressing with that foot, keep the hip lifted, turn the chest. Reach the arm up. So use this arm to get that lift, and as you lift, turn, and look up at the hand. Bring the hand down. Bring the other foot up. Reach the arm up. Keep the hip lifting, press down into that hand, lift up through the arm, and reach up through the fingertips. Shoulder blades moving forward toward the chest, chest lifting, keeping the arms connected well into the sockets. Adho Mukha Svanasana. So reestablish the weight on the left and the right side of both the hands and the legs, lengthening up through the arms. Lift the trunk up and back, maintaining that direction of the hips, moving back, outer hips, backs of the thighs lifting. So next we'll go into Chaturanga. So coming from a high position, you'll come forward to that plank position Re-establish the weight, the movement of the hands into the floor, lift the wrist up, and then coming down. Keep the extension through the heels, lengthening the back legs, top of the buttocks moving away, thighs lifting, looking straightly, slightly forward. Press back up. Come into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Lift the thighs, press the heels, you can come onto the front of the toes, lifting the lower back up, lift up through the chest. Thighs lifting. And then come down. Walk your hands back. Ujjangasana. Bring the feet together. Elbows moving back. Not moving the hands too far back and not straightening the elbows. So here we'll just get that lift of the upper back. Movement, connection with the hands to the floor. Lifting up through the chest. Press the feet down. Descend the top of the buttocks. Move the tailbone into the body. And then coming down. We come into Salambhasana now. So you're going to take your hands behind you. Let's just get two straps for this. So you can have one on the feet and you can have one on the arms. So just take your strap. Buckle it up. We'll need it for later couple of the other arm balancing poses. Okay, so I've got those straps buckled. I'm going to take strap on the feet. So you maybe you just bring them hips width apart and then lie down <coughs> and you'll have one strap for your arms. Okay, I want you to be able to use that for resistance to be able to press up. Take your strap on your wrist 
and arrange it in a way that palms are going to be facing one another. And then lift each leg so you're right on the front of the thigh, front of the growing. Stretch your toes back. Now press the arms into the strap and use the movement of the shoulders through the fingertips to lift the chest a little bit here. So where the arms were in Gomakasana, you're lifting there from the front chest, from the back body. And now reach the legs up, press into that strap with both the hands and the legs. Salambhasana. And then come down. Okay, from here, you can take that straps off. Once you have the straps off, just bring your hands back to the mat. Turn the toes under. You're going to come into Chaturanga from the floor. You're going to press the hands, press into the toes, and lift up. Tailbone in, buttocks moving down, extend through the calves to the heels, look forward. And then come down. We'll do it one more time. You can walk the hands back a little bit. From the shoulders, lengthen to the elbows. Now lift your knees off the floor, tighten the knees, firm the legs up, gripping the muscles in toward the bone. Extend through the back of the leg by pressing the heel back. And now press and lift. And then come down. Come back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stay with your breath. Balance between the left and the right side. And then come back into Vajrasana. Heels together, toes together. Sit back. Cut. Okay. All right, now we're going to use two blocks. All right, so going into Lolasana, we're going to come back to that original pose that we did, which was Gomokasana. So, first bringing the right calf or shin behind the calf of the left leg. So scissoring it back, and then coming back, sitting on the, on the feet. So again, this knee is higher. So let's take the blocks higher just to begin with. So we're going to use the movement of the arms down to connect to the shoulders. And the back is going to be just slightly rounded. So this pose, low lasana means to swing, like an earring would swing. So this is the action of, the, of this pose. Gomokasana, legs swinging, so you can press down equally and lift both feet up. It's like a little dangle. All right, so let's try bringing the blocks down a little bit. If you have to have them that high, it's a little unstable. So taking them down further, and then press the hands down, lift the chest. And then from here, you're going to be drawing the navel back, lifting up, and you're lifting the legs up. So you're moving the shins and the feet upward toward the hips. Pressing down, coming forward just a bit so the back is slightly rounded, chest is lifted, and then coming up. Okay, let's do the other side. 
So there's a very compact action here. So scissoring the shin bone behind that calf. Sit back. We'll try the higher height again. You have to press evenly, otherwise your blocks will be unstable. You're going to lift both feet up. Stay with your breath. And then come down. So there's a drawing up here. Pelvic floor is lifting, the legs are lifting, and there's a little bit of a rounded back, and the abdominal area is drawing in. We'll just do one more time. Press the hands down, lift up. Okay, so you may or may not be able to get the feet off the floor. Many times you can't. So I'm just gonna show you what you can do here with the legs. So we're gonna bring the feet together to kind of tie them together. So I'm crossing my calves, I'm crossing the ankles and pulling that in. And then come back to that original position. And with the feet tied, it helps to feel that action of drawing up. So you can at least get your feet off the floor. All right, pressing down into the blocks. Inhale, lift. So this strap wasn't very tight. I'll make it a little tighter on the other side. So if that was of no help, then you know that you have to make it a little bit tighter. And then coming back, bring the shin bone behind that, or in front of the calf, so you're scissoring it in. Okay, other side. So remember, drawing the feet up. Here you've got the strap, which may or may not help you. Draw up through the abdominal area, and come down. Okay, take your strap off. And now you're going to go into Tola, uh, Bakasana. Okay, so stand up. We'll go into this from Uttanasana. Have your feet hips width apart. This is Bakasana, crane pose. So you come down, bend the knees, bring your fingertips onto the floor, and then <clears throat> move your upper arm. So this back of the arm, move it down as low as you can and then press the hand down and back. Okay, you're gonna do the same with the other hand. If you don't press your hand back, then you're, you're not gonna have the support. So your knee and your shin and your thigh are gonna be rest, resting on the back of that arm. So bringing it back and then bring that arm back, spread the hands, and now you're gonna shift your weight forward. So you come onto the toes. So like that. So I'm going to show it from the side. Coming down, moving the arms back, one at a time. So it's really pushing my knees back, pushing my shins back. And in order to lift up, I have to come and shift my weight so that I have the weight on my hands. Bring the weight onto the arms. So I'm going to lift one toe and then I'm gonna lift the other toe, bring the toes together, look forward. And then come down. So we'll do that again. So let's just show you with lifting one toe at a time. So if you're having a hard time with that, making sure you walk your arms down. And the shifting of the weight is really important here. So you, as you come forward, 
come onto the toes. You can lift one foot up. Lift the other foot up. Come forward. Lift one foot. Lift the other foot. Draw in through the abdominal area. Lift up through the pelvic floor. Press the hands down. Looking forward, put the back round. And then come down. Okay, let's take a block behind. And we'll use this for a little bit of lift through the, through the feet, getting the feet off the floor. Give us a little bit of extra height. And now bring your arms back down. Actually, let's take the feet on the block first, bend the knees, and then reach your arms back, hook, so you're pressing back, you're pressing the hands, and with that sticky mat, the hands don't slide, so you're able to press into that, and then get that movement onto the toes, feeling the weight of the shins and the thighs on the back of the arm, be on the toes, Lift the abdomen in and up. And then if you can lift up from there, lift the toes up. And then come down. All right, we're going to take the block away. So that's Bhakasana. So <clears throat> sometimes we go into Shirshasana from this Bhakasana, Shirshasana 2, from this Bhakasana action. So I'm just going to show you the lead into it. We won't do the full pose, but you'll come forward. Lift your hips. And bring the crown of the head on the floor. And then lift one foot, lift the other, using the hands, lift up. Connect the toes. And then preparing to come down, bring the toes down. Come back into Uttanasana. Bring your feet together. Release the head down. Bring your arms to the side. Be on the fingertips, walk the fingers back, release the head, release the side trunk. Shifting your weight like you did earlier. So if you've got a lot of weight in your heels, your hips are moving back. So now shifting that weight forward, release the head. And then come up. Let's sit down now. Sit in Dandasana to begin with. And we're going to come into Lolasana, or Tolasana. So you'll have blocks again on each side. And we'll come into Padmasana. So bending your left leg, take hold of your foot. We can start this way, just coming into Baddha Konasana. And taking the foot up. And bring the foot over onto the top of the thigh. Now, if it's difficult for you to go into Padmasana, of course you can use a strap. If there's one knee that's not cooperating You can use that strap, just like this, which will put it on the bottom of the foot. So let me try that one more time. So here, I've got the strap on that lower foot. This is Ardha Padmasana, so I'm not bringing both legs into Padmasana. Bringing the legs close together as much as possible. And for Lolasana, you're going to press your hands down, lift up through the chest, and then lift your legs, 
Lift your hips and swing. Okay, so that's Arda Padmasana. So we'll do the other side. If you can do Padmasana, you can do that. So first coming back to this Bhattakanasana, turn the feet, bring the foot in, bring the other foot in. So we'll just go ahead and do it both sides with the strap, making sure to take that foot, buckle up the legs, bringing the thighs together as much as possible. So pulling on that strap. Same action again. So we're moving from here, we're going forward. So bring the blocks a little bit forward so that when you lift up, you're lifting from the pelvic floor, the diaphragm, and the abdomen are moving towards one another. So press the hands, strong connection from the shoulders, the shoulder girdle into the hands, lift your legs. Stay with your breath. Lift the knees, lift the thighs. And then come down. We'll do it twice, so we'll go into Padmasana, second side. If you <coughs> don't need the strap, and you're doing Arda Padmasana, then you can just it's better if you're only doing Arda because this foot will be lagging behind. So put that strap for that foot. And then for those of you going into Padmasana, bring the other leg up. Bring the feet together as much as possible. Sit up tall. Press the hands down from the shoulders. Feel the, the work of the whole upper back, the upper back and the chest working together. So the back is broadening, chest is moving in. Using the hands, lift up. Press the hands, straighten the elbows, lift the knees, lift the thighs. Lift up through the pelvic floor. Navel in and up. And then come down. Coming back into Dandasana. And then we'll do the other side. Bring the foot up. So I think I did the wrong side. So let me change sides. So taking the strap for that bottom leg, if you're doing Ardha Padmasana. So sometimes you might have to go back a little bit in your practice if you have some kind of knee condition or you've had an accident. So just using the props necessary so that you can go into the pose. I'm gonna lift my legs up so I can bring my hands more underneath the legs. Press the hands down, lift up. So now I can feel that strong connection from my hands to my shoulders. Lifting the legs, lifting up through the pelvis. Stay with the breath. And then release. Extend your legs out. Or take your legs out of the strap. And come to Dandasana. And then you're going to lie down. We've done a lot of movement of the pelvis toward the diaphragm. So now we're going to get a little bit more opening. So we'll come into Satcha Bandha. Bring your feet back. Walk your feet in. Have your block. Take the height of the block that's going to be best for your body condition. So I have this high block. I'm going to bring it right under the tailbone and balance there. And then extend my arms. Bring the feet onto the floor. 
So this is similar pose. This is more of a <clears throat> Setchabandha Chadushpadasana rounded back, which is what we were doing in Salambhasana. So take your hands behind the block, extend from the shoulders to the hands, lift the chest. Keep the feet pressing on the floor. Keep the shoulders moving down and lift the chest. So again here, we started in Gomakasana arms. The hands were behind. So where the fingers were, move and draw the spine into the body. So absorb the spine as you lift the chest and open the heart region. And then bring the feet closer together. Press the left foot on the floor. Raise the right leg up. Coming into Ekapada, Sachibanda, Sarvangasana. Feel the balance with the shoulders, but feel the balance with that bottom foot. Press the foot down, drawing the femur bone back to the pelvis with both legs. Lengthening the lower back. The front armpit chest is lifting, back armpit chest is descending. So getting that movement to create more space in the chest, the arms, the shoulders, and in the breath. Now be with the breath. Press up through the ball of the foot. Have the kneecap facing you, the thigh facing the, uh, the wall in front of you or behind you. And then take that leg down. Reposition your feet, coming back into that balance between both feet, both hips, both shoulders. Pressing into that right foot, just making sure you're balanced on that block right at the center of the tailbone. And then as you press into the bottom foot, bend the knee and lift the leg up. Move the arms down toward the floor. So as you move the arms down, shoulders down, lifting the front armpit chest, allow the chest to expand. Take the breath in, creating that feeling of fullness in the chest. As you deepen the breath, feeling the lungs, feeling the quietness through the abdominal area. So as the leg is lifted, then it's active. So all the muscles are moving in toward the bone and the bone is moving toward the pelvis. That connection is going to bring that circulation into the pelvis, the organic body, to create more <clears throat> energy, movement and flow, circulation, more oxygen. More balance, more quietness in the mind. Bring the foot down. Reorganize your hands. Change the lacing of the fingers. Shoulders down. Bring both knees up. Balancing on that block. Come into Viparita Karani. Well, you can see your feet now. So connect the big toes. Connect the inner heels. Lift the inner heel away from the inner ankle. Spread the toes and press up into the mountains. Keep the hips on the back of the block. Maintaining the lift of the chest. And then be with your breath. Begin to listen to the 
breath through the throat. As you're in Jalandara Bandha, soft, slow, smooth breath. Observing that quiet. Observe your experience. Bend your knees, bring both feet onto the floor. Thighs are parallel. Bring your feet in a little bit. You're going to lift up. Take the block away. Bring your hands to your hips. Walking up a little bit as you can. Move your shoulders down. Pressing the feet equally into the floor. As you press the shoulders, as you press the feet, Lift the chest. Press into the mounds of the big toes, into the inner heel. And then coming down, you come onto your toes, lift up, take your hands out from underneath your hips, and just come onto your back. Adjusting your hips away so the back can lengthen. Just be on the feet. Let the back relax down. Adjust your arms, your shoulders. And then extend the legs out for Shavasana. Rolling the legs out, making any adjustments that you need. Flat on the shoulders, the top of the skin of the back arm is rolling down, inner arm is turning out. Your arms are turning so much that your thumb is moving toward the floor. See if you can start to arrange your arms in that manner. And then just allow yourself to completely relax through the abdominal area. As you bring the breath there. Taking a few normal breaths, long, slow, soft breath. Ujjayi. Lengthening your inhalation, lengthening your exhalation. And then coming back to the balance. Just let the breath relax completely. Focusing only on your exhalation now. Letting go. I'll set a timer for you. You'll know when it's time to come up. So just allow yourself that gift to be in Shavasana, completely supported. Stay with your breath.
Namaste.